morning, Dylan. Hello, Buck. Good, uh, good evening for both of you guys. <laughs> yeah, so today we're just going to run through um, different ways on Pulse Chain that you guys can earn passive income. Obviously, I have Dylan and Buck with me, um, part of the PH team. You know, Buck has uh, done a lot for this community. I don't know if everybody knows yet, but I feel like they should. Um, he's the founder of Fox um, Fiat and Fame. Uh, really awesome projects that we have on Pulse Chain, and obviously they are several ways that you can earn passive income as well. So, you know, I think there's a quite a bit that we can go through in terms of ways to earn passive income and like why you would want to. Obviously, everybody has bags, right? And one of the tricks to growing bigger bags is just to earn passive income on those bags instead of always just doing shit coinery, right? <laughs> no offense to those guys, but you know, some people just want to park their money somewhere and earn passive income. Now, there's risks that are involved with passive income plays as well, and I think it's important that people understand those as well, right? Like uh, it's not always just APR and APY. Um, obviously, everything has its downfalls as well. So I guess I'll kick it off and go uh, with PulseX, of course, right? Like everybody knows you can go provide liquidity over in V1. Um, you don't earn fees in V1, but you can stake your LP tokens in the yield farms. So you obviously don't want to provide liquidity over there to assets that don't have yield farms because then you won't be earning any fees or any ink. And then you have Pulse XV2 where you can provide liquidity and earn fees, but you don't earn incentive token over there. You only earn fees. And the downside to LP providing in um, Pulse X, for instance, is your impermanent loss risk. So obviously, if the trading pair has volume, then you're getting quite a substantial amount of fees if you're a bigger player in that pool as well. Obviously, it depends on your size. Um, but the downside is impermanent loss. So if you enter an LP position at a certain ratio, you don't want to exit that LP position at a substantially different ratio to what you entered into um, and the reason being is impermanent loss so if you're an emotional player sometimes lp providing won't necessarily be something for you right like if the market takes a little bit of a downturn or one side of the pair starts dumping and you're suffering huge impermanent loss then you wouldn't really want to exit that position until it levels out a little bit but some emotional players will and that's why impermanent loss is such a big thing so if you are looking to LP provide and that's maybe you, you know, providing in between kind of more blue chip tokens like Pulse and Pulse X, for instance, that hold their ratio relatively good is a better option for you. Um, obviously, if you're in meme coins and et cetera, other things like that, providing LP can be a little bit, yeah, more in terms of per impermanent loss. And Buck or Dylan, do one of you want to like go to Fox now? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it PHUX works basically the same way as, uh, as PulseX does, except, uh, there's a little bit of, uh, different bells and whistles on it. Right. Um, you know, you have the flexibility of having, um, fees accrued in the liquidity pair and get some extra APR with some farms. Right. So it's not like a, a one or the other, like on PulseX, you got two and one on PHUX. Um, and then, you know, you can have stablecoin pairs, right? I fucking love stablecoin pairs, all right? I can't get enough of stablecoin pairs. Uh, the volatility is no. And, um, you know, the APYs are pretty high for having dollar coins, right? Um, yeah, once again, I love stablecoin pairs. Um, and uh, they work really well, right? Uh, they level out the market. They give, better, uh, they give really good rates for guys that are trading in and out of stablecoins. Keeps the market really uh, level. So everybody gets uh, great price execution on their buying and selling of, uh, with stable coins, right? And you don't even really need that much TVL to level out the market, right? Um, like for instance, there was, a, uh, I don't know, what, $9 million or $10 million of stable coins that was bridged over and put in PulseX pools um, and paired against each other, right? They weren't paired against assets, they are paired against other stable coins, okay? And uh, so I think it was like three mil versus three mil. And then they did that for uh, three different pairs, right? So uh, $9 million in total, okay? Now, even with all that thick liquidity on PulseX, since it's a V2 pair, um, you can still suffer uh, some pretty high slippage with some relatively small trades, right? So like I went and tried to swap uh, 10 grand the other day and I still got $500 of slippage on that 10 grand. It's ridiculous for a stable coin, right? Um, whereas, you know, you go to the, the 
the stable pool on PHUX, um, you're not getting that, right? Uh, because it is a humongous plateau. Um, if you, you know, if you were to chart the actual slippage on either end of these trades, um, it's like, you know, the V2 pair would be uh, a big parabola up and down, right? And on these stable pairs, it would be like a big plateau. It goes straight up and it'd be flat for uh, the duration of the, um, what is it? The, uh, the trades and then taper off at the very end, right? So anyhow, yeah. So with PHUX, you know, you can participate in these farms, um, which are targeted to, um, you know, highly liquid third-party projects. Um, they're targeted to stable coins. We love our stable coins. Um, and uh, RH coins, of course, right? Uh, and there's different pools that you can do with multiple assets, more than just two, right? So you can do up to eight, which is fantastic for things like um, the Maximus guys, right? Like uh, we all know that they weren't extremely liquid on Ethereum before Pulse Chain came out, okay? It's just a fact, you know? There's no FUD there. It's just what it was, okay? Um, but now, uh, I think they have a couple of pools, one of which I think is over a million dollars worth of TV up on a PHUX, and it's got all of the Maximus stuff in it. So, uh, Base, Lucky, Trio, um, Desi. Dylan, you maybe want to disclose something there, just for which, complete completeness. Which is? Um, the PH team is a massive holder of those tokens. Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, I think that was because of the one of the, the, the sacks, right? If I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there you go. Um, disclaimer. All right. Um, but yeah, so, you know, the pair is very liquid and you get some pretty good price execution with, uh, these, uh, Maximus perps, uh, for that reason. So, um, I think that sums up uh, PHUX, you know, once again, you can farm and provide liquidity while earning fees. You don't have to choose between one or the other. You can do both. Um, which is great, right? Um, so yeah, PHUX. Can, can I can I jump in, Katie? Is it all right? Yeah, plays book. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you guys are kind of um, skipping the foreplay and going straight to the the kind of you know um, the act the itself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which which I think <laughs> if if you go, if you don't mind, I want to just kind of back it up a little bit and kind of talk about the more important side of this, which is how to think about yield uh, in general. Um, there's sort of two types of yield in, in investment um, and uh, crypto land is similar. And I want to make sure that if, if you guys get anything from this space, you understand this concept that I'm about to lay out for you. Because honestly, this is way more important than anything else I think that anybody else is going to say tonight about like the specifics of a particular protocol. Um, and this is the concept of nominal yield versus real yield. Okay, so what is what does this mean? What is what is nominal yield and what is real yield? So this is bond terminology. Nominal yield encompasses both inflation as well as um, the yield that you get uh, effectively from above inflation, right? So um, if you're investing in a you know a, a corporate bond, let's say, and inflation is you know, 3% and you get uh, 9% from the corporate bond, um, y your nominal yield is 9%, but your real yield is more like 6% because you shouldn't um, really count the inflation side of things. So in crypto, typically speaking, you see yield come to you in a, in a few different ways, but one of them is through um, a dump token in effect, uh, which is paid to you. Um, it's an inflation token, right? And they have different inflation mechanisms, um, but nonetheless, it's inflation. So that's not real. That's basically just keeping you more or less where you are currently, right? So a lot of, a lot of staking things are primarily inflation. And then there's a real yield component, which is that which is actually sustainable in terms of, you know, fees it's generating or whatnot. So you want to learn to, dis to discern between them. So many protocols will have insanely high APRs, 100% percent 
200%, 300%, 50%, right? Absolutely unsustainable. And the way they do that is by having an inflation token, right? And this isn't in itself bad, right? It's just you should understand that's what that is. And you should never, ever try to compare that directly without doing a whole bunch of math to something that's actually real yield, which is actually paying you, you know, real fees um, on something that isn't massively inflating, right? So this is a, this is an Im- incredibly important concept for understanding passive income, right? If you don't get this part, then you really are just you suck. You don't you, you're not even in the game. So I just want to make sure that you understand this. And it's not to say that you know dump tokens are bad or things that inflate are bad. Um, you know we've got protocols that have no inflation. We have protocols that do have inflation, right? We have protocols that directly benefit from uh, fees, right? Uh, actually, Dylan, I think all our protocols do that, don't they? Yes. So all of our protocols will have a component of real yield. Um, two of them will have no inflation. One of them will have inflation plus real yield. But you want to make sure that you understand the maths of, of, of this when you when you go and compare them. So, you know, if you look at XYZ DEX with 150% APR and you look at fiat.io where, you know, if you deposit, let's say, USDC or, or DAI, you're getting 10% or whatever the prevailing rate is, that you're, you're not comparing apples to apples. Right, so XYZ Dex is giving you a token that's massively inflating um, every day, right? Whereas the other one's giving you actually a real yielding um, uh, income stream that is uh, with paid to you in something that's actually kind of reliable from a pricing standpoint. So this is, in my opinion, the kind of key lesson that I want you guys to get. So make sure you understand this difference. And you know anybody that comes up on stage and wants to talk about their protocols, like I really think it's good if you actually say and break it down where your protocol is providing an inflationary token, which we don't really know what that's worth, right? That's, that's, that behaves a lot like equity um, versus um, something that's, you know, uh, an interest in the form of something that is relatively reliable in terms of its pricing. And, you know, this is particularly pertinent to the community in the sense that uh, HEX was, uh, we used to call it staking interest, and we relabeled it uh, inflation later because we weren't really being exactly accurate when we were calling it staking interest because it's not exactly interest, it's actually inflation, right? So it's, it's incredibly important that you guys understand the difference between those two things. And um, it's not to say that one is good or one is bad, but you should understand the difference. And, you know, obviously they can have, uh, they can have pieces of both in them. Um, but this is, I think, the really key, the key thing for understanding passive income. Yeah, I would agree. And I think like transparency is a really big thing that a lot of people don't have in crypto right now and in our community a little bit too. Like I don't think all projects are fully transparent. So, I mean... I uh, value that input. And same with you guys, um, being transparent about the fact that you hold a lot of the (laughs) Maximus tokens, for instance, right? Like, you know, that's uh, kind of disclosing to the community that you have a little bit of another benevolent actor, right, in a sense, too. So, yeah. In terms of, like, Fox as well, I want to go back and point out that it it is um, a fork of Balancer. And one of the best parts of that is it does have really good optimization or smart contract execution for stablecoin swaps. So, like, if you're talking about just stablecoin to stablecoin swapping, it's always going to have better, like, order execution on Fox. Um, yeah, it's just how it is. Their contracts are just built and designed that way. So Fox is really awesome um, in that sense as well. Not just the fact that you can have, like, the pools with multiple different assets in them, but just the smart contracts themselves for different assets. Um, yeah. If you want to like, Buck, if you want to jump over to fame, because I think there's a lot of um, opportunity, I guess you would say, or passive income streams with fame, but people don't necessarily understand uh, the concept over there providing liquidity either. So do you want to jump into yeah. it? I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go and I'll do it. Try, I'll try to do it in the context of what I was just saying, right? So, so fame, the, the token, um, it, 
gets 40% of the fees of the protocol. The other 60% goes to PHLP. Um, they, they both have different risks. Um, so fame is a pure play on the, on the protocol's fees. Um, now, is there inflation in, in, this, in these fees that you're receiving? In this particular example, no, there isn't. The, you're being paid basically in hex, pulse, pulse X, uh, a basket basically uh, wraps Bitcoin and Ethereum. So there's no inflation beyond the actual natural inflation of those tokens, right? So it's, it's a pure play yield opportunity um, based off of the trading volume uh, that occurs on that platform. So as, as the platform's uh, trading volume increases, uh, it um, increases the, the value of the fees. As the underlying assets that are traded on the protocol increase, so let's say hex doubles in price. That means, in effect, the fee has doubled in price. So uh, you, the financial term for this is price leverage. So we can call it token price leverage. If this were commodities, we, we like oil or something like that, we would call it commodity price leverage. But this is token price leverage. Uh, this is this is paying you fees based on uh, on the underlying activity. So that that in itself is a, a particularly useful thing. Um, and, and I, uh, I like that you brought up fame because I, I recall we were, Dylan, if you remember, we were talking to Randy Hilarski in his YouTube channel, maybe on like day two of fame and some, some like kind of fat American guy, like, uh, from his group was like, well, I don't like the, I don't like the APR. It's only like 10%, you know, or something. <laughs> but it was only like $10,000. Yeah, yeah. We, we'd process like 10 grand worth of the volume or uh, of fees. And he's like, was, what the fuck is this that? Was se- <laughs> this was the second day of the protocol. And I said, no, 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 actually, that's really, really good. Right. He's like, yeah, but like I can go to, you know, XYZ decks and, and get like 1500 yeah, I think it was, APR. I think it was Daytona finance at the time. It's like, oh yeah, I can get 150% on Daytona. I'm like, okay, but yeah. have fun over there. Yeah, exactly. But it's like, you can get a dump token that will drop commensurately right so then you're in a game of musical chairs with everybody else that farms this token or or owns this token right where you're all trying to sell against each other right um and that's kind of what you see with um there's a bunch of things that have this behavior right and then i'm not really trying to be negative about them I'm just trying to explain the difference right so um ink is one of them um i would imagine uh what is the nine inch equivalent of ink um is it big black cock uh, <laughs> I have no idea, bro. Yeah, anyway, I think, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's Big Black Cock is the, is the equivalent of it. And uh, I like I like those guys. Hexy Bass and I get on just well. Uh, that, that so it's not like a dig at that. It's just like that's the way the protocol is set up, right? So it's like if the, if it's slowly minting an infinite amount of that token, that's not really a real yield. Whereas if you go to Aave and you deposit a million dollars worth of Dai and you get five percent. You know, that's $50,000 of real yield, right? So, you know, it's really important that you guys understand this because this is one of the key ways that we can lie to you as promoters of coins or protocols, right? It's very easy for us to create a made-up bullshit token and, and give you a fucking massive APR number, right? This, this is the easiest way for us to lie to you, right? You need to understand what that thing is actually is. And if it has any claim on any real cash flows right so with the ph products what i like is that they all have claims on real cash flows um, we have inflation in phux we don't have it in uh fiat or fame um, but in phux we have inflation but we also have um real yield in the sense that uh the way the voting mechanism occurs that um when uh you uh put yourself into the p uh ve PHX pool, you vote to basically distribute the fees, um, you know, uh, of the PHUX to different pools, but you also have the underlying LP fees as well. Um, so you're getting a combination of both things, right? So, uh, so it's, it's not like it's just a made up infinite dump token. It's, it's, it's a token that actually has real value because it allows you to basically, um, direct where fees go in the future right and that's and that's one place where you know that thing has um 
you know, I would say a pretty interesting uh, dynamic. Um, and it's not, and I'm not trying to pick on anybody's protocol or anything like that, but it, it just, it, it's incredibly important that you guys understand this uh, thing because the number of times I've seen people try to compare something with a thousand percent APR to something with 4% APR. It's like, you're not looking at apples to apples. You're looking at two different, two completely different bets that are, are not at all comparable. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody understands that part. There's like two sides to that. And I think if people went around in DeFi summer um, last cycle when everybody was doing yield farm hopping, then they don't really understand that those APRs, they don't last either. When people start jumping into those yield farms, you know, they decrease in value. But, you know, aside from that and going back to, and it does get some people wrecked if you're going into highly speculative ones as well. I should mention that. The ones with the most like highest APR are generally the most speculative assets that you will have like encounter more impermanent loss risk for. That's why they have to offer a higher APR with those assets because, you know, obviously it's like to compensate the two pairs. Like if you aren't earning as much in fees as you are in permanent loss, like you're, it's not counteracting each other, then you have to have a higher APR in the other token to, you know, counteract that section. But like going yeah. back to fame. Hold though, on, can I, can I say one thing though about what yeah. you just said? Uh, you very quickly. Uh, the cash rate is like 5%. Right. Yeah. The if you look the Fed the Fed funds rate the cash rate as we call it in Australia, um, central bank rates is like five percent. Okay. So APR should should ideally be above that. Um, to the extent that they're way above that, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 150 percent above that, that's how you that's how you know you're not looking at a real number, right? You're looking at something that is contemporaneously yielding this, but will drop in price because it kind of has to because those yields are unsustainable, right? Whereas something that's actually, you know, yielding 5% or 7% or 8% or 10%, that, that, that's probably closer to a real yield um, yeah. in, 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 ter in terms of how these things work. Uh, so just, just make sure you understand this, this key thing, because honestly, I think this is just massively important. Like I, I, see, this, I see this again and again, people just get murdered on these uh, protocols where they 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 get advertised a thousand percent APR. And it's just like you can't have a thousand percent APR, and the only way a thousand percent APR gets normalized is by price dropping, <laughs> right? That goes it's back just... to Dow season. If anybody was around with Dow season, you know they offer these huge APRs, and then the price chart just absolutely plummets, or there's like literally no liquidity. You know, like it, yeah. <laughs> it's those uh those times. And, and it's not exactly the protocol's fault. It's like, in the sense that we need to we need to give you a number, right? And you need to look at that number. But um, you know, it, like you need to understand what a reasonable yield is, right? And it, it, the way it works is basically, if the cash rate's five percent, um, you know, a, a risky corporate's going to be about seven percent, right? A really risky corporate's going to be about ten, twelve percent, right? You know, Zimbabwe is going to be about fifteen percent. Right? Yeah, I think and then anything above that is super risky. Super, super important, fucking risky. The important people like part that people need to understand with yield is somebody has to be on the other side of it, right? Like somebody has to be providing liquidity for you to be able to exit that token on the huge APR that you've made, right? And most of the time the liquidity pools are too thin because the protocols and the founders can't actually sustain it, so they can't even provide you enough LP, which falls back onto the community. And then the community has well, to be willing to. Sit we in that we LP. don't we don't have any intention to sustain it. Katie is my <laughs> is my view. Well, but, I mean, yeah, if they offer a huge APRs like that, they're not. But um. No, I mean, because why would why, why would you why would you why would you you know just get murdered? Like, why would you just offer yeah. to pay to to defend this peg? Um, it just what it just it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense, right? So that's that's why I'm trying to protect people from this exact thing because I just see it again and again and people just don't get it. Um, so nominal yield versus real yield, right? So yeah. what is the inflation of the token? Okay, if the inflation of the token is ten percent, okay, you know, um, you and then what are the fees that the protocol is generating? That might be three percent, right? So your real yield is more like 3% because that's, that's, that's what's happening from all the people trading on it. Um, but the 10% the, the temper, the that's coming from inflation is a wash, right? You know, you may get lucky and you may be able to sell it before it drops, 
but all things being equal, it, it's going to even out and um, there's going to be real, no real gain for you under most circumstances. Um, you know, basically uh, over time, that's just, that's just the key thing that I want people to get. Yeah. And like jumping back to um, fame now for the people in the room that don't know what fame is, it's a GMX book. Um, GMX is on Arbitrum really successful protocol it pretty much made arbitrum popular um and that is what fame is and the parts of fame that is like really interesting for people that are looking to earn passive income is their basket of tokens which goes back to the phl people that um buck and that were explaining and it's like it's just a basket of assets so you have your stable coins you have pulse pulse x hex and i think you guys have um eth and bitcoin in that pool right yeah yeah That's correct. Yeah. yeah correct and 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 in this pool it's a little bit more than that because you're effectively serving as the house, right? So yes. you can think of it almost like uh, you're the insurance company insuring against the the traders, right? Mm -hmm. So you're you're in a player versus player match against them in that in that particular token. Uh, if the traders win, and you know lately they've won, right? You know, so like um, you know even even though there's lots of fees being generated, the PHLP guys aren't really uh, haven't really benefited too too much. Um, but the, the beauty of it is that you get to pick where you want to be. You can be a trader, you can be a PHLP provider, you can be a fame provider. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, uh, like, sorry, it matters, but it doesn't, you, you get to choose, right? Which, which one you think is the best. Well, don't you. undersell the PHL people because yeah, it does encounter risk. So like, if you look at people that are taking leverage on centralized exchanges, it's a centralized exchange that actually makes all the money off you, right? Like they make the fees. So when you have the basket of assets, it brings it onto a decentralized network, right? And you guys become the house. That's what Buck's explaining. So if you provide liquidity in there, you're now the house the same way that a centralized exchange is that offers leverage trading on their platform. So if you, if traders are winning, you're losing. But if traders are losing, you're winning. Um, and statistically well, proven, traders lose most of the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. Know, correct. Yeah. But it's, actually, it's actually better than that because it's like traders... Uh, we traders can win and, and I can still win. I just need them to trade a lot. Yeah. And that's and true. If, 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 what's if the, things go sideways, what's the turnover? The one. What's the turnover for the entire exchange? It's about two million, right? Traders have won, I think, uh last I checked, one point three or one point four million. So PHLP is up what, five hundred K, four hundred K or six hundred K? Even though the traders have been willing been winning, you know, a million and a half uh worth of profit, right? Yeah. And if you compare that to a stable coin, this is a much better option, right? And if you compare Pulse Chain to and Fame to a centralized exchange, like last cycle on um, centralized exchanges, they would literally manipulate the market to get people liquidated. They would create scam wicks to literally liquidate positions, people that had long and short positions open on their centralized exchange. Whereas on Pulse Chain, like we don't have that style of thing. Like we don't have listings. We don't have those types of uh, market manipulation things happening. So like if you're in the pool, you're literally just making yield based off what traders are literally winning and losing versus full market manipulation like you see other places. Hey, Katie, um, if you don't mind, I've invited some friends to join yeah. us. Um, and um, I'll try to go through chronologically based on who asked to come up first. Uh, can, can I add one run? more thing though before you move oh, on? Oh, please, else by all means. Fame? Because yeah, like please. PHLP is actually pretty cool um, because other people don't really realize, but it acts as an AMM as well. So you can literally enter a position and you guys have like a set period of time that you have to stay in there just to make sure like people can't arbitrage within that PHLP pool, but you can enter with an Correct. asset and exit with a different asset. Like, cause it's a basket of tokens. Um, so that's a really cool feature that PHLP and fame have that most people don't really know about. And you don't really, that's, that's an, that's an excellent, pool. that's an excellent feature that I don't want anyone to know about. Um, uh, well, very, very, sorry, very, I just told several hundred people very, about it. Very, very good of you uh, to tell these people. Uh, Katie's I'm looking sorry, for you. but you like you hardly eat any slippage in the pool if you do it that way. Like if you have a hex position and you want a pulse position, you can enter the PHLP pool. But you guys do have that time frame, which is super valid, right? So the PH team and fame actually protect the people in the PHLP pool. That are, like if there is a market fluctuation or like a price. Um, week, scam week down, somebody can't use the pool to arbitrage because you have to be in that pool for a certain amount of time before you can exit. But yeah, the slippage is very little. Sorry, Buck. 
it's it's very useful um and it yeah is. in full full disclosure like we're, we're major phlp providers um <laughs> and for us it's uh like we we like holding that over holding a stable coin right like if we can beat stable coins with the phlp we're very happy and you know one thing that i think a lot of people don't understand about investing um is that you should have your risk bucket where you're um you know going shoot trying to shoot the lights out right and you should have a bus you should have a bucket that's more kind of income focused right uh that we call this in finance the barbell right so typically in traditional finance world it's your equities are the growth kind of bucket and then your your bonds are that are, are going to provide the income so with with um crypto i like to use stable coins and you know different yielding options like ave or fiat as, as, on pulse chain for example or phlp as alternatives to um the uh the kind of stable side of things because if you're just holding tether or die let's say you're actually going backwards because inflation's let's say five percent so every year that you just hold stable coins uh doing nothing you're you're basically losing five percent of your purchasing power um so uh so that that that's that's a very important thing. Um, so we've got a few people up. I'm going to introduce everybody right now, and then I'll kind of, if if you don't mind, Kate, I'll just I'll just pick uh, the guys who went Go first. For it. Yeah. So um, we've got a really nice day as here. Uh, first of all, we have Corey Geary, who's a influencer who I think we all like. Um, uh, he has a nicer ass than Katie. Um, I hope she doesn't get jealous. <laughs> love um, Corey. Love. We love Corey. Um, we also have, uh, 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 the guys from Tetra here. Um, we have, uh, the guys from, uh, two fucks here. Uh, we have Don, uh, from, uh, internet money. Um, and we have one vacation from power city. Uh, I think Katie's familiar with power city. Um, and then, uh, I've also got kind of a wild card here, which is happy healer. Uh, who's, who's got something pretty wacky that I've actually asked him to pitch to us. Uh, so, uh, so we'll be doing that in a little, in a little bit as well. I don't know if it's any good. Um, and let me just say on the onset, like you guys have to do your own research. I don't know if, if any of this stuff is good or terrible. Um, don't, don't, you know, think that because I'm here that I'm necessarily endorsing anything. Um, I haven't done the work on, uh, on everything. Right. So, uh, just l let me, let me make that very clear. Um, However, what I will say is that the people that are that I've just mentioned, I think, are all really uh, decent people. They've they've been pretty uh, forthright uh, people as long as I've known them, and that that that's actually going through quite a bit of time. So uh, I'm very happy to to see them up here. Um, so uh, is, is there if if any of you want to go first? Um, otherwise, I might just call you out, uh, uh, Don. You were first. So is there anything you would like to say? Sure, Buck. Thank you very much for the endorsement. Greatly appreciated. Um, but also, Katie, thank you for holding the space and having me up. Really appreciate that. Uh, being that this is a space about, well, first of all, can everybody hear me? Is my mic fine? Fantastic. All right. Um, <clears throat> being that this is a space about passive income, I'm going to narrow it down to exactly what we want to talk about. So I'm the co-founder of the Internet Money Wallet. Uh, we are a basic uh, MetaMask replacement. One of the advantages of swapping within our wallet is we aggregate all the DEXs and our swap router takes an extra hop so that you do get the best rate. You know, like Buck alluded to, there's some pretty thick farms on two fucks in the Maximus ecosystem, but you might not know that. So when you go to swap in the internet money wallet, all those DEXs will come up. And, oh, I was going to go swap on PulseX V2, but now I see that Fox gives me more tokens for my swap, so I'll click the button and swap there. Every time somebody does swap in the wallet, there's a fee, 0.729%, which is less than MetaMask, it's less than Trust Wallet. But that fee is paid in the native coin of the chain that you're swapping on. So if you're swapping on Pulse Chain, that fee is paid in Pulse. That Pulse. 100% of it goes to the holders of our token, TIME, T-I-M-E. Now, 
If you go to our website, internetmoney.io forward slash stats, you can see in real time our swap volume. We just launched V1, fully audited, twice audited, both from a security standpoint and an economic standpoint. Um, so within about a month, we've done about $4 million in volume on Pulse Chain and have paid out over $50,000 in Pulse to time holders. You don't have to lock time up in any way. You just hold it. And if you're holding it in the internet money wallet, you can claim right from the wallet. There's no length of time that you have to hold it. You can claim as often as every block or never. And um, one extra thing is that we have a buy and burn associated with time. So if you go to uh, our DAP, which is app.internetmoney.io, you can see all the buy and burn stats. There's been over a million time that has been burnt. And the good thing about that is it drops the total of the supply, which then magnifies your position in the pool. So it increases your percentage of dividends that you receive over time. And that's a basic overview. Um, you can check out our website, join our Telegram, hit me up on DM if you wanted to find out more information. Katie, looks like she has a question. She's got her hand up like the straight A student that she is. I have yes, three questions. <laughs> sure. First question, does your um, in-house uh, swap have MEV protection? At this point, it does not, but that is something that's high on the roadmap. And Oof. if users Katie. are... <laughs> if you that's, a, that's a fucking good question. If users are um, swapping within your protocol, like, are they interacting directly with the router contract? Yes. Okay. And thirdly, if you said that, like, 50000 paid out in PLS um, to your holders, is there any other way that you guys are getting passive income through your wallet, or is it just through people doing swaps on the swap? So at this point, the swap is the only feature that we charge a fee for. Obviously, sends and receipts are free to do. Um, if you were here for over the past couple of years and you've heard me speak before, uh, I always touted that you know our, our first main goal is to make a product, our vanilla ice cream, that is the best vanilla ice cream that it can be. We want it to be safe, secure, private. We don't collect any data. Zero bits of data do we collect, which makes it very hard for us to troubleshoot <clears throat> bugs and issues and things of that nature. Uh, but to your point, Katie, as we grow, now that our base is set, completely secure, completely private, now we can build on top of it. We do plan to have things like in-app bridging and um, on-ramping and off-ramping, but that is a uh, continual build process. But And every step along the way, anytime there are fees, we're going to go ahead and deliver them at least a portion to time holders. I do just have one more question. I'm sorry, Buck. <laughs> no, that's that's what we're here to do. We're here you to have, do exactly this. Let's, you have let's the have dollar it. value, but do you have the number of transactions that are being made inside of your wallet or just the dollar value? So we just have the dollar value. We have it set for the swap router to be able to read that data on the on chain because it's all on chain. Um, but aggregating that data into our front end, again, is another extra step. And anybody who's building out there, you, you know that, uh, first of all, talented developers, are they don't grow on trees. Uh, trustworthy, talented developers are, are pretty difficult to find. Um, we have to pick and choose what are the most important things that we have to concentrate on building. I mean, we have a backlog with over 700 plus items on it. And, you know, if we had a thousand devs, sure, everything would be done in a day. But And plus, it's all got to be done in a secure fashion. Now, all of our devs are doxed to me. I have all their social security numbers. They're all U.S.-based for the wallet. I know everything about them. And that's another key feature of or key point of being secure is knowing who you're doing business with. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a lot more important than people understand, Don, what you just yeah. said. That's a, That's a big deal. Uh, sorry to yeah. interrupt you. Keep going. Oh, no problem. No problem. Any, uh, <clears throat> you know, 
I'm glad that you agree because it is one of those things that people don't realize when you are building is you can't just have any schmo to hit you up. Hey, I want a job. Okay, yeah. come on, let's 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 build a wallet, you know. And you can't just have that. You have to do your due diligence as a as a founder, as a builder, uh, to pick the right people on your team. Speaking of which, if there are any talented developers out there, we are always looking to recruit um, developers. So please hit me up, and we can do our um, investigation process and hopefully get you on the team. Awesome. And if I can just interject and say some nice things about internet money, Katie. Um, like uh, I'm not a technical person like you are, but uh, what I do like about them is uh, they've been really consistent. Um, they're very forthright. Um, they're, they're, you know, a father son team, um, you know, that's, you know, been very active in this community. Um, not just uh, showing their product, which they do a lot of, but just also trying to be useful um, in a million other different ways. Um, they've shown tremendous character. Um, yeah, not 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 going down the route of uh, you know um, promoting scams or things like that. Um, so uh, I, I feel like they've got very good character. Um, they cap their sacrifice, um, similar to what we did with P uh, Fiat and Fame. Um, and, uh, it, we both came to this conclusion independently of each other. Um, and I'm not surprised that I think their sacrifice, uh, has done well from a return perspective, um, which is, which is pretty unique, right? There's only a few sacrifices that can say that, um, I'm pleased to say fiat and fame are, uh, two such sacrifices, uh, especially when we include, um, all of the free airdrops with e-fiat and, PHUX that those people received as well. Um, but, um, you know, the internet money guys have done very well. Um, and I'll also add in there, Piteous uh, has, has done very well in this regard. And I think Tetra as well, who we'll hear from in a, in a minute. Um, so um, when we were looking at Oblivion two months ago, or not even two months ago, a month ago, um, what, you know, one thing that definitely made me feel a lot of comfort was having conversations with guys like Don or Stu from Tetra, um, you know, and, and just knowing that there's good people here trying to build useful things for Pulse Chain. And it's really amazing um, that we have um, our own community driven wallet that is supporting things like PHUX and, you know, this community. And, uh, you know, it's just really exciting um, that we have that. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Don. Um, and uh, if you don't mind, we'll segue to Neil for T-Shares from Tetra and uh, say hello and tell us about yourself. Well, before you do, Buck, I just want to say thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate that. It means a lot to me and the team. So I'll pass those words along to KG. I'll go ahead and uh, step down now. Yeah. Thank you all for Well, no, don't run away like unless you need to go. Like we, 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 we'll, we'll let this open up. Um, yeah, that's so fast, but... <laughs> yep. stick, well, stick, stick, have, around you, stick around if you I can do, i do i do have a day job um it's uh I'm a hvac project manager i gotta go on a couple projects make sure nobody McDonald's? gets hurt uh, hvac heating cooling hvac large car okay. cooling. Yep. So, your ac sure bug come on gets, get with it no one gets hurt today um so you're like you're like uh richard hart then you're like an hvac guy there you go he was doing he was doing that wasn't he back in the day yep. um Anyway, all right. Uh, thank you, Don. Um, Neil for T-Shares. Hello, sir. Hey, Buck. Uh, mic check. Everybody can hear me well? I hear you very well. All right, good. Well, thanks, Buck and Katie, for uh, opening this uh, spaces up. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm Neil for T-Shares. I'm on the Tetra team. And uh, uh, by myself, I've been helping Stu out since uh, pretty much day, almost day one of, uh, of his projects. And as they've evolved over time, uh, in Stu's, you know, infinite wisdom, we've come up with some pretty neat things for, uh, for Tetra and for the community. Um, Tetra is a software as a service and it's an automation tool. And we're in a process now of developing the infrastructure to, uh, aid in the automation, uh, and starting with our, our, uh, DEX aggregator called Omnis. And so what we've done is, uh, we're not trying to sell a token or sell a, or sell anything or, 
I mean, we don't even shell our tokens. We don't care if you buy them or not. Uh, our, our purpose is to provide software service and, and tools to the people who use Pulse Chain uh, to uh, better their experience and hopefully uh, retain and gain more value within the system. So um, right now we're in the process of, of fleshing out our DEX aggregator uh, for the swaps. Uh, we've added, you know, we've had, we start with PulseX and we've added uh, the PHUX. Uh, and then uh, we'll have Spark Swap here to, made public. And then we'll add the rest of the DEXs uh, uh, in a short, short, in short order uh, to the aggregator. And you so, also have uh, limit orders, don't you? Uh, yeah, that's yes. Uh, the other feature we have is uh, on on with, with Omnis is limit orders. Uh, this is a uh, uh, a limit order that that aggregates through the the dexes that lets you set a price uh, and and buy it at any given time in the future or sell. So this is something that allows people to uh, you know fire and forget, you know, not from the computer. And so and through the power of limit orders, you can you know you are able to you know, set your prices and you are able to do things like ratio trade and stuff like that. Uh, so it's a it's a powerful tool that people really need to use because if nobody can be in front of the computer every day, 24 seven and with tools like this, uh, this, this basic limit order function, that it's a uh, it's something that people really need to take advantage of. If because if you want to trade around or increase your position or get out of position, these are tools that are made available for you uh, in 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 Pulse pull chain and the way we work as far as, you know, technically. Uh, we have our, our own our own uh, node, and so we are, we have MEV protection, as Katie, Katie mentioned earlier, and uh, so we don't have to worry about being front run MEV bots. And because of that, it allows us to uh, also the way we've designed things to pull our prices directly from the the, the dex pairs on the dexes. So we're not using a third party service to aggregate and, and, and get price feeds. We're doing it directly from the from the from the dexes. Neil, so Neil, can we see support. this right now? Like if I'm if we're sitting on our computer right now, can we see this? And where should we go to sort of follow along with you? Sure, you can go to omnis.tetra.run, and you can see the the the, the front end, and you can set a, a there's there's swap features. We have a five v one. Is it is it, is it om, omni? Uh, how do you spell the first word? Omnis O M N I S dot tetra okay. oh, yep. dot run. Can Sorry, we roll yeah. back for one second for people in the room that don't really know? Limit orders are where you oh can God. set a market price for something to be executed at in terms of tokens. Like if you want to sell a token at a set price, you can set a limit order. If you want to buy at a certain price, you can set it. There's no guarantee that it will fill. Like there actually has to be liquidity at that dollar value or stay in that range long enough. So in terms of like executing, sometimes it doesn't happen. But in terms of like exiting a position... Limit orders are really great because it doesn't hurt the price because you're exiting within a range, like, you know, that you set um, versus, like, market dumping the shit out of a price, right, and eating a bunch of slippage. They're also really great if we're in market volatility and you want to try grab some lows, you can set a limit order to catch those dips because obviously not everybody can be behind their computer at the time. I just have one question, though, in terms of your limit orders. Is it all on-chain or do you have part of the execution off-chain? 100% on chain. Nice. It's all there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we're directly uh, on chain with doing everything. And be, and because we're doing all the things with within our own protocol, we, we are safe from third party manipulations. And that's a really important feature because we're not having to worry about bad price feeds and stuff. Where the DEXs are trading at and their ratios at that time, that's the price you're getting. And I think it's like a, I think it's like, it's less than a millisecond of, 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 of updates and price feeds we have through our technology to give you the best and fastest price feed from the DEXs. That was my next question. So you're not using an Oracle to pull in the price feed, you're using the DEX itself. Yeah, it, it is what it, it, it refreshes at a super fast, like it's less than a millisecond rate. And then it displays as fast as the network can display. Uh, for you, so as you set your price in the limit order, you 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 you're moving your your mounts around is updating constantly, and you'll see updated price feeds very quickly. Well, you I guys just got my uh, full support. So for people in the room that don't know, most limit orders are actually done through um, Oracle services, like using Oracle price feed, which is easily manipulated and etc. Um, and most of them aren't done all on chain. Most Limit orders are actually majority executed partially off-chain. So, I mean, that's actually really cool. Congratulations being the first people on Pulse Chain to have limit orders and congratulations for building it. 
I, I have a question that. about the limit orders, if you don't mind. I have a question about the, this uh, protocol. When you take the limit order, just like a random question, when you take the limit order, do you lock your money? Yeah, no, the money is yes. The, the, your t your tokens are put in a smart contract, and then when the if the conditions are met, it will then execute. And then if they are not met, you'll be refunded, or you can cancel or whatever the limit order uh, and get your mo money back. So, it has so to be to done that way because it's all done on chain versus having it part off chain as well. I'm pretty sure. No, no, yeah, yes. yeah, but like I, I built bought like personally for myself so like for me for example when i take a limit order it's kind of like it's not a real limit order it's just like alert and then market buy so i'm not locking anything so i can gamble on a lot of tokens at the same time uh, but mm -hmm. that's like obviously like not secure enough like to take it like decentralized and stuff but just was like a question that's a, yeah, that's we'll a good question thank you for that yeah, Neil, uh, yeah, I got a question as well. Uh, when do you do you have um, some sort of front end that shows uh, the order book yet? Uh, do you guys right, plan so to have something like that? That's future development. Um, right now, nice. because the way the way decentralized the way this decentralized stuff works is different than having an order book on a other on another different exchange. Because that's there's you have your pool, you have your pooled tokens right in common pools, and then it's, it goes back and forth. You can see who ha who's setting orders and stuff like that. On DeFi, it's different because it's a function of, of the price movement in a, in, a, in a dynamic way. So there's really no pool of money sitting there ready to come in back and forth, right? It's just it's, it's apples and oranges. So you you would never have an order book like you would consider. Think about order book on a traditional um, CFI style limit order concept. This is more dynamic. And we will have something like that, but it won't it won't it'll feel different just because of the nature. You'll be able to see who's got what placed. But that's about it because it's not going to show the traditional thing just because of the dynamics of the situation. But we yeah, will so, have something like that in the future, yeah. though, that to, to, to okay, aid people yeah. in trading. Yeah, because these uh, these exist on Ethereum, like for the zero X uh, limit orders, which are different than yours, right? They they do their stuff off chain and settle it on chain with bots and stuff. Yours is different. It, it ha you hold your liquidity, you have a strike price, and then it executes at that strike price once the price moves below your your, your bid or whatever. But yeah, right. so having these order books would be great, especially for hunting and stuff. So yeah, I look yeah. forward to uh, to having that. Well, I'm so excited for that. Well, this is this is just the tip of the iceberg because right now in, in private testing, we have a way to edit your limit orders. So right now, you place a limit order today, and the price starts moving. You can edit it, and it will then, without costing you anything, it'll you can change your, your token amount, you can change your slippage, you can change um, the time. So you can adjust your your limit order without spending more gas to then get closer to a new range that that change on you. So now you can edit your limit orders uh, as as needed. Now be the next feature or the next update. Neil, and I'm going to need you to chill out because you're getting me a little bit too excited. <laughs> oh no! Just I got I got one better for you. And also we have dynamic limit orders coming. But wait, out. There, but wait, there's more. No way there is. So now we we're testing this as we speak. Dynamic limit orders will allow you to set a buy in the sell in the same instance. So let's say you want to buy a token at one price and sell another price. You can set two different transactions. So when the first one executes, the second will automatically load it up and ready. So when it executes, then you're out. So whatever you want to do and however you want to trade, you will allow the, you can have two different orders set at the prices, the buy and sell as you see, as you see fit. And it's you can edit well, it's a, it's, it's a little more complicated. It's a, it's 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 not a stop loss, though. There is a stop loss in it. Uh, it's 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 dynamic. It's uh, it's the first step in automation. A buy and a sell, right? You can buy and sell within one transaction, and it will deploy based upon the market. And you can edit it on top of that. And this is what Tetra That's will wait. do. Wait, wait, wait! I smell this flash ones. I'm literally <laughs> so excited right now. No, but, but but it's important. Like, listen, this is an interesting protocol. You know what I mean? Like, I would use it. I just want to know, like, if it does what it what it does. Yeah, like um, I said, we're 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 private testing right now. So just as soon as it goes through the paces, we're going to give it to, uh, update it to the public. It's just that's what's coming down. And so what what this what we're doing with Omnis is creating. It's like the oil for the Tetra machine. Because once we have this finished, then we'll be able to automate many different strategies using this basic tool function to then move your, your your do your DeFi strategies throughout the chain. So if you want to 
you know, go and set your, your, your uh, take your LP and manage your LP, take your yield. You can set limit orders on your yield. You can buy and sell and trade and do all what you want to do within with using this tool set in an automated way. That's the goal. And this is the, this is the, the foundational tool that allows us to uh, bring this automation to the public. If you guys right. can get that order book public as well, like I'd really like that. I feel like everybody in the community would too because part of that means that you can also track market sentiment. So you can also like, you know, when you get those real sharp Bs in um, charts, you know people had limit orders set so you can like get an overall sentiment of where people are at as well. Um, so like the order book would be really awesome. But yeah, it's, I think that's pretty good feedback uh, that Katie's just giving you there. I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, it, it, it's on that's a bit of a killer app. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. We're, yeah, we're, if the order book was on there, then like it's uh, uh, next level. Neil, Once if you have, don't mind, if you okay. if you don't mind, I just want to I just want to keep going, uh, but we'll come. We can come back to you. Um, but I, let, let, let me say some nice about Tetra. All right, let me give you my honest opinion about Tetra and the team. Um, similar to KG and Internet Money, uh, the Tetra guys not greedy. Um, they didn't over raise. I'm pretty sure – I don't know if you can speak to this, Neil, but I'm pretty sure your sacrifice guys are feeling pretty good. Um, and that's, once again, not that common, right? But, you know, a lot of people like to say all sacrifices are bad. Mm, maybe maybe not in the case of pH products or um, Tetra or Internet Money or a few others. So, um, you know, uh, I, I speak to Stu pretty regularly. He'll just call me. And to be honest, I don't know what what the fuck he's saying to me because he has such a thick Scottish accent that I generally just agree politely um, with whatever he says. But um, you know, th th this is a team that, uh, in my opinion, keeps its promises, is uh, ethical and committed to this community, and you know has done a really great job. And probably um, people don't know enough about you yet, in my opinion. You're, you're similar to Piteous yeah. and um, uh, a few other guys where, you know, we don't really, we don't really know enough about you, but I see you climbing up the league tables, right? You're number 21 on fatty uh, .io's uh, pulse chain tokens, right? You know, you've, you've climbed right up. Um, you're, you're neck and neck with Mintra right now, which I don't think too many people would have predicted if they were just going purely based on the sexiness of their, uh, frontman. <laughs> <laughs> well, can can yeah. we all agree to call it Batayas, not p Patiz or whatever you're saying? Can we all agree just Pitias? to call it Batayas? Because I can't say the other way. Patayas, and... tomatoes, I don't know. Yeah. Batayas. Uh, yeah. And now, hey, oh. I just have one more question. Is Tetra sure. a fork of gelato? No. It is completely fresh uh, code. It's all, everything we're doing is from scratch. That's the thing that sets us apart. Stu and his team, Stu is a dev, by the way, and he's literally built this from scratch. Um, he's a, he's a, he's a Scott. He's a Scott first though, before he's a dev. Of like, course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, have, you like to say to, one... have you talked to Stu, Katie? Like you literally. It's... No, I had an interview um, with him lined up, but unfortunately he uh, fell sick. So I'm just waiting. Cause yeah. And then it's, the Tetra it's, dude's it's in like, here and I'm sitting here getting It's excited. like, when you talk to Stu, it's like, he, he's like this. He's like, Listen to my money, Katie. You, oh, you, you, better, you better fucking use my platform or, uh, <laughs> or... <laughs> Sounds like Sean Goddard. It's crazy. Anyway. Um, hey, but yeah. One more thing, Buck. Let me yeah, say please. something real quick about our token. Just real quick. For people. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Get back, well, get look, back to real yield. Yeah, right. So this is the thing. Uh, we have real yield. And I appreciate you uh, defining real yield earlier. Um the Tetra token exists for only one purpose. You can stake it and you earn a portion of the fees generated from the protocol. That's it. And so that's all it does. So if you want to take your part of the share of the fee generation, you can buy the token and stake it. That's all it does. We don't, you do not need the token to use Tetra products, but, promise or anything. But Neil, I get 15 gazillion per percent from, you know, big giant penis token uh, APR. Why should I, why should I get your, your, your yield? Instead, it doesn't sound like it's that exciting compared to well, a big giant penis token. Well, the difference is we pay in two different tokens. We'll pay the, the, the Omnis fees. We paid out in Pulse to the those who hold the Tetra token and stake it. And then the Tetra fees will be paid out in stable coins to those who from the Tetra uh, uh, fees gathered from using the automation. 
So we'll be a stable, stable coin or you'll get pulse as yield so, if you stake the Tetra token. So that's about as real as real yield gets with pulse chain tokens. It, the native yes. token, pulse and stable coins. That's that's as real as it gets, folks. All right. So that's a that's a that's a very uh, key uh, differentiation uh, thing. So, yeah, thank you for uh, making sure we, we, we point that one out to everybody. It's very important, that one. OK. Um, we'll come back. To, we'll let you guys talk in a little bit. Um, Corey Gary has his fucking hand up. Corey, I'll, I'll let you jump in. What do you want to say? What's up, guys? I figured I'd hop in here really quick since I'm not a builder and I don't want to take up all the builders' time. So I want to get them room to come up here on this platform. Nor do I want to be a builder. I like leveraging your guys' platforms and you know by being an investor. And this is actually how we onboard people to the no coiners like the passive income concept people well us crypto people take we underestimate it because we're so used to it being shoved down our throat all day with a thousand percent here and there like you talk about buck which is not real um but we're used to it and no coiners don't have no clue about this world and crypto and and tradfi and the, when we're brought up where everyone's taught to us hey you need to earn passive income and set yourself free that's what we were taught, and that's how I got into real estate because I was chasing that passive income dream, trying to free myself. But you could use this carrot to bring no coiners in. In fact, we go even as far as when we speak at our real estate events, we put the PH stuff, the protocols, on our power, on our pitch deck, and we show examples of passive income. And we don't show the thousand percent, of course, we're showing like 30 percent, 40 percent. Maybe 50%. Maybe that's a little on the higher side, right? Depending on how much, how much PHUX token you got. But, like, we show these things to them. And, man, they eat it up. And that's how we bring them in. And then once we bring them in, we're like, look, hey, the passive income, that's just the icing on the cake. Now you can make these gains. Because normies or no coiners don't understand or conceptualize the gains they can make in crypto. So we bring them in through the passive income as the carrot. And then we start teaching them about the gains they can make. And so that's, man, you guys don't understand... When you're out there onboarding and when you're out there talking to people, maybe in your workplace or wherever you're at, man, talk about the passive income because that is sexy and no coiners understand that shit. They get it. They don't get all the other stuff that we talk about in crypto, <laughs> but they get this one concept. And I mean, this is what we do at every event we're at. In fact, I'm in Houston right now. We're speaking at an event tomorrow. There'll be about 500 people in the audience and in our pitch deck, we have the PH stuff there. We're going to be integrate, integrating Tetra stuff in there in the future. Some of these other protocols that are launching that we like, we see the real yield. And so I just really want to stress that. We appreciate you guys, what you do, the builders. You guys make this community. Um, so thanks a bunch. And, and Buck, I'm glad you did kind of differentiated between real yield and, and kind of fake yield. But there is some yield out there from inflation. It's, it's, get, it's not exactly money. fake yield. It's not exactly well, fake. That's what they say. You, you, that, that's you need to understand the difference. You need to understand if, the if difference. If you have there. enough buy pressure to sustain that yield, the inflation, then it's then it to me it's still a real yield. For example, the ink token right now, it's, it's, I feel it's, like uh, it's, 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 it's it's not it's not yield, yield though. It's it's equity. So like that's that's the thing that this is going to sound it's very. It, this, that's the thing that's going to sound very. Um, uh, philosophical to you guys, but it's very important if you want to understand hex. When you stake hex, you're basically buy, you're basically buying equity in the future of this community. In my opinion, right? Um, if the community has value in the future, then those stakes are going to be valuable, right? Uh, it's yes. not so much it's it's not so much a yield in the sense that you know you you put in a hundred dollars and you get five percent, right? It's different. It's 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 an equity position, and that and and that and it's a, the the line can be a little bit mud, muddied, um, but that that's kind of what people need to understand about them. It's like you know when you when you invest in a, a hex stake, you're investing in the future of this community, right? You're not you're not locking away money and getting a pure guaranteed return on it. Right, what you're getting is um, a position in this community five years from now, ten years from now, fifteen years from now, right? And that and that that's the that's sort of the key difference I want people to understand. When you buy 
sorry, when you farm ink, um, you're not getting, you know, a thousand percent APR, right? You're getting a position in that, in that farm, um, that's going to give you an option to sell or, uh, do something else later. Right. So it's just very important. People understand that difference. That's great. And, and yeah, as long as the buy pressure is there, because everything is supply and demand and everything, right? That's, that's what makes up life in markets, supply and demand. And as long as you have the demand factor there, which I feel like, for example, ink, it seems very sustainable at these prices. In fact, we saw a run up in this last when everything was running up because people were buying it. So there's obviously a demand there. It's just when the inflation is so high, when the supply just outweighs the demand by magnitudes, that's when the shit just dumps to oblivion. Um, so, the, yeah, that's a very good uh, differentiator. And I just, I mean, like I said, I want to just come up here and talk about the, this concept of passive income and the fact that Pulse Chain is really anchoring on the idea of the, uh, the fees I, uh, or, or profit sharing or revenue sharing. We like to call it crypto dividends. Like, like similar to if you own Coca Cola, you can earn a dividend, although it's not very much. For dividends and being an investor in the company and so that's why we love it so we love you guys we appreciate everything you do i just want to come up and talk about that but i'm going to step down let some builders will come up so thanks again guys thanks, thank Gary. you Corey. thank you Corey. um and um something i want to say about what uh, just reacting to what you um uh just said is that you know income might be a boring topic to many of you especially you you, you younger guys that maybe aren't super rich yet Right. Um, and like, that's pretty normal. Like, don't take that as an insult. Like when I was 20 years old, I, I didn't have any money either. Right. Um, but um, income is very, very important. The richer you get. Right. Because basically um, you don't need to shoot the lights out. Right. You're just looking to earn a, a real return on what you already have. Um, so it's, it's, it's something that is, very important to people that actually have the most money. The people that have the most money are typically people that are actually uh, over the age of 40, over the age of 50, actually over the age of 60, right? So uh, Dylan likes to joke and call me a boomer every day, but it's it's literally those are the people that have all the money. So if, if you can onboard a boomer, it's worth it, that's worth onboarding 100 Zoomers. To be honest, yeah. Bo boomers are great, guys. I love boomers. <laughs> we should all like boomers. All right, next we're going to go to uh, the Long Vacation, I think, who has his hand up anyway uh, from Power City. Hello, sir. How's it going? Hope everyone's doing well. And I, I can't uh, express you know more my um, you know uh, uh, excitement that other people are saying the same thing that we've been saying for a long time: revenue over inflation, right? Um, you know, that's, that's power city's motto. And that's, that's how we've been building, you know, um, our entire ecosystem. Personally, I've been working in finance for 25 years and, uh, really fell down the, uh, the fire rabbit hole, you know, five, six years ago for my own personal, uh, you know, financial journey. And, you know, income is one of those things that, you know, is basically, it frees you, right? So do you want to work for somebody forever or do you want to eventually be independent and have the, the you know, ability to say, no, I don't want this job or I don't want that job because I have the ability to walk away and not be destitute. Income from your investments allows you, it gives you that, that freedom, that flexibility. You know, as some people call it that FU money where you know, if things take a turn at work and it is no longer rewarding and exciting and everything that you want it to be in your life, you have the ability to say, no, nope, I'm going to do something else. And you're not just tied to that forever with those golden handcuffs, right? So, you know, income is, is key. And, you know, so often a lot of people, especially, you know, in the U.S., Financial education is not something that, you know, we find in our school systems where, you know, we're not told a lot of times, unless your parents happen to be good at it and tell you, uh, we're not told how to manage our money and how to put every dollar to work and how to understand these financial markets that are around us. So for many, many people, it's this weird black box that they hear about, but they have no understanding of how it actually works. 
And I think, you know, this is an opportunity here in crypto, one, to, to have control of your money, but also, two, to be able to put every dollar to work. You know, I, I used to joke that uh, when I when I first started getting into, you know, learning about, you know, uh, uh, financial independence, retire early. That's the whole fire movement. Um, you know, I realized that, uh, you know, some of my my money wasn't working for me. Some money that I had sitting in a checking account or a savings account. It was like having a bunch of dollar bills sitting back there on the couch, eating Cheetos all day, watching television, getting high, not doing its job. I want those dollars to go get a job and go bring more dollars back home. And how do you do that? Well, you invest in things that generate income, right? So these protocols here that are, we are building, uh, all of these builders are building on Pulse Chain, you know, trying to bring revenue generating uh, protocols that allow you to earn a passive yield. Um, these are the things that as you accumulate and as the market starts to go up and you see more adoption of the chain, you know, these can make a real difference. So for Power City, we, we create, we're creating an ecosystem where we have a central core staking platform, amazingly called the core, very creative. Um, and we are placing other DeFi applications around it where that core then earns the fees generated by those applications. So we have a fork of liquidity called Earn that will allow you to borrow uh, against your PulseX tokens and generate the PXDC stablecoin. There's different types of yield that you can earn within that protocol um, as well. There will be the uh, Pixel Park NFT marketplace, um, which you know we're getting ready to hopefully open to a public test net very soon. We have the amplifier automated front end to liquid loans and earn that will allow you to very simply and easily um, consolidate all the work required to compound and 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 shuffle around your your rewards that you earn within these lending protocols uh, back into it to amplify your gains. Um, and it'll do this by allowing you to hit one button to compound everything into one transaction versus five or ten transactions trying to claim and restake from multiple places back into others. You now we're trying to make it easy for you to basically earn that yield within this, uh, this ecosystem, you know? So I, I think these are all the, the goals that, you know, builders here are trying to put in place and the tools that you see this community bringing to market, you know, Power City, the PH ecosystem, um, even what, you know, Fast Up Blue Square talk about two bucks, you know, these are tools that exist in Ethereum, right? And, and these other chains, but they came out and evolved out of a very mature financial market. And here we have a, a chain that's not even a year old yet. And we have this extremely diverse series of DeFi applications being built here. Very, very powerful applications that will allow us to do some amazing things very, very quickly. And I, I really hope that people see the enormity of that because that's, that's a massive opportunity. So um, <clears throat> if I can interject here uh, along vacation. So I've, I've invited like uh, basically all the pulse chain builders uh, that, that kind of fit the, the description of uh, yield opportunities to come to this space uh, because that's what Katie wanted to talk about. And uh, like, I just want to let everybody like, I hope, I hope you guys understand. Um, there's a lot of negative feedback that we get because uh, you know, we did sacrifices and, and X, Y, Z, but in my opinion, it's very good that we have all these people that have that, that are actually building all these things, giving people all sorts of different ways to try to make money. Um, that creates this sort of, um, underlying current of economic, uh, energy in this community for people, for people to play, to, ex to experiment, to figure out what's useful, what's not. Um, and, um, like, I'm just super, super happy that we have it, um, you know, especially given everything that's happened this year. Um, you know, Richard's had to take a little step back um, for kind of tactical reasons, which I think we all understand. But it's just wonderful that we have all these different teams building, doing interesting stuff. And, um, you know, I don't want to toot our own horn, Dylan, but, you know, 
I, I think it's really cool that Richard uh, acknowledged um, us uh, the other day um, and he's acknowledged other teams as well. Um, and it just shows how decentralized and how um, kind of interesting Pulse Chain really is, right? And even guys like Eric Wall, who are our biggest futters, um, you know, Eric has, uh, uh, you know, told me privately, um, you know, well, I didn't think much of Pulse Chain, but, you know, like when, when you guys, uh, you, you're building the best stuff on Ethereum on Pulse Chain, I realized actually, no, this thing's a little bit serious, right? You know, like I, I, I hope he doesn't, uh, hope he's not offended that I shared that little, uh, you know, personal conversation that I had with him, but it's, it's incredibly important. So, um, you know, I want people to understand that we actually have a decentralized uh, community of a bunch of different teams. And actually, a lot of us are competing against each other indirectly or directly. Um, and I'm going out of my way to, to, to basically bring all these people up who may be my competitors. I don't really care because I think that we all sink or swim together. Right. You know, so to the extent that, you know, Tetra has yield opportunities or, you know, Power City has yield opportunities or liquor loans has yield opportunities. I don't really mind. I, I actually just want I just want you guys to succeed because uh, if you do, my stuff's worth more money. That's just the way it is. Um, you brought up the thing. I need to do a disclaimer, by the way, because I didn't do go, it at the start it. of this. I didn't do it at the start of the disclaim. Uh, disclaim. I, I do. I need to do a disclaimer. Um, nothing in this room is financial advice, right? We're not telling you to invest in anything. It's a stream about passive income plays on Pulse Chain. Now, like, there's places you can literally park your assets, like Pulse and PulseX, you know, over in Fame, where you can earn yield on the assets that you like. Like, no one in this room is actually telling you to go buy anything either, to go stake it, to get assets, like in return, right? Yield because they're more speculative plays. None of it's financial advice. It's just bringing into an open space opportunities that sit on Pulse Chain because like over on other sure. chains, right? One of the biggest things is being early into protocols, being early on the chain. And those people generally make it better, right? Like they are beneficial from these different things that are built on the chain. And especially if they get in before everybody else. So, you know, opening up spaces for passive income is something that I am pro for. I think everybody in the community knows that I've always been pro builders, right? Like I always give accolades to everybody that's building on Pulse Chain because it's 100% community driven. And like we can be controversial about sacrifices or whatever, but every other chain has grant programs and we don't have that on Pulse Chain. What we had was a community. And the community has worked extremely well to bring all the best applications from every other chain over onto Pulse Chain. And you know, like you don't have to hold a token to use a platform either. Like Bateas is the best DEX aggregator on Pulse Chain currently, right? They have just better order execution. But you don't have to hold their token to be able to use the platform. Like you don't have to hold loan token from Liquid Loans to open up a vault and leverage the protocol. So it's just about having an open space that's not financial advice to tell people all the different plays that are within a chain, right, that you guys can maximize on or maybe get enough interest to go look at them yourselves, you know, do your own research. Yeah. Yeah, cool. That's and let me add in a, right? Sorry, if, hold on, uh, long vacation. If I could just add an additional disclaimer, uh, each of our protocols has the, its own specific risk as well, right? So you know, maybe there's an oracle involved, maybe there's contract risk or something like that. So um, there's no um, there's no risk free yield play uh, per se. You know, we, like, even with hex, for example, um, we we think the hex contract is pretty sound at this point because. No one's hacked it since it started in 2019, but theoretically it could be hacked, right? So, you know, just just understand that, um, you know, every everything that you invest in has has that has a little element of risk. Um, you, you know, even if it even if it's uh, you know been around for a long time. Um, so, I think that that's an important thing to say as well. Uh, long vacation, but we're going back to you now. Sorry to interrupt you. No, I, I was just going to say that the whole point of this is to have the tools in the toolbox so that you can learn and have the right things to use to get to your goals, right? There are many protocols out there that even aren't here, but the key is to learn. You, you got to take an autodidactic approach to this to teach yourself to read and to ask questions in their communities 
and find out about what these things do, how they operate, and where they can fit into your own personal financial plan. Um, none of us is going to tell you what to do and how to go do it, right? We're just telling you that these are the things that are out there. These are the ways that, uh, that they can benefit different people, but there's no one size fits all, right? So I, I really, it's funny because someone was telling me the other day that like do your own research is a meme. It's like, well, actually, you know, crypto is the one place where you have full custody and control of your assets. You have the final say in everything that happens to your money. You need to then be educated and you need to go through and make that decision because there is no complaint line. There is no one to call when you make a mistake. If you make a mistake, well, you know, that's a hard lesson, but it is a lesson. And hopefully, you know, you do it once. Everybody makes at least one mistake in crypto and then you learn and you never do it again. But the important thing is if you do the take the time and truly read, I know it's not sexy, but man, this is super, super important. Take the time and read and go into these communities and ask questions and educate yourself about how these things work to understand those risks. Then you can see, okay, where does it fit into where I want to go in my financial journey, right? So that, that's the challenge to each and every one here because I'm not going to say any one tool is your solution, right? I'm not here to sell you anything other than sell yourself and you make yourself more valuable by learning and educating yourself and understanding the options that are out there so you can figure out how to put those to advantage in your life. Cool. Thank you. Long vacation. Um, Sean, I see your hands up, but I, I, we're just in a little bit of a train of people. Uh, there's two more to go and then um, we're going to, we're going to let you guys um, uh, dive in. Um, we're going to go to Fast Abdul next. I think he's going to talk about two fucks. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I just want to say your profile picture is a little bit racist against Arab people. Fast Abdul, you know, I might, I may have to cancel you. I understand, Buck. Yeah, no, I'll, uh, I'll take that in stride if you do. So thanks for having me, guys. Hi, Kitty, uh, Buck Dylan. I appreciate uh, being invited to speak today. Very happy to be on the stage with the quality of hosts and uh, speakers that we have here. So my protocol is called two fucks. That's two P-H-U-X. A uh, couple of quick disclaimers. First, the protocol is not live. There's no token. Don't get scammed. Uh, second, yeah, it's called two fucks, which is a little bit on the nose. Our uh, motto is we give more fucks. Um, I want to make it very clear that we're a separate team from the fucks team, from the PH team. We're building on top of that ecosystem. So, you know, they don't owe us anything. We don't owe them anything. Uh, we're amicable with with that team. I like to think, uh, though, you know, they may have. Different yeah, can I, can I can I can I jump in there? Uh, just Please do. say a few nice words. Yeah. So basically, I, I they may be a rug pull. They may be scammers. I have no fucking clue. You guys got to go do your own homework. What I do know about these guys is they've been around a long time. Um, they're committed people in the community in the sense that they've invested a lot into this space. Uh, I, I know what they're forking. It works. So I'm not too, too, too worried about that. And um, it's uh, it's really exciting to have people build on top of your protocol uh, other than that. So uh, I'll be looking at what they're doing and uh, making sure that it's done correctly. Um, but uh, yeah, continue fast, Abdul. Well, thank you for your tacit approval, Buck. Uh, yeah, we are very pleased to be building uh, with the PH ecosystem on top of the Fux exchange. Uh, partly because we do have a lot of respect for uh, both the protocols and the team. Uh, I think it's a really, um, you know, a really strong community. And um, when we saw sort of the future in what would happen to Fux over the course of a couple of years and how much uh, value is locked in that exchange, like easily, you know, second to Paul Sachs, um, more total value locked than all the other exchanges underneath it. Uh, that's definitely where we want to hang our hat. So our protocol um, is fairly complicated, but I can explain it in a simple way. Uh, the purpose is to unlock higher yields and stronger voting power for the Fox ecosystem. And we do that by uh, in two ways. There's the votes and then there's the yield. They're sort of separate for us, even though they're not with Fox. Uh, with Fox, you need a whole bunch of uh, what they call prime Fox or VE Fox staked for you know, up to a year to get the maximum boost in both your voting power and uh, and your yield. Um, and with 
our protocol to fucks, we've built a machine that continuously buys fucks, locks it permanently in our system so it can never be sold as fucks again. So as somebody who's participating with fucks on any level, uh, this is likely beneficial and continues to build until it will have, uh, you know, a truly uh, titanic portion of the fucks on the market uh, if uh, we get our way. And the advantage to our users is that huge fucks pool that we have, you can come and use. So you can get a boost and stake your LP tokens like you would on Fox. And of course, everything just goes through our front end right into Fox. You can stake like a whale, basically, and uh, experience, um, we'll say, a boost that is likely for most users to be much greater than they could get by themselves. It's a very complicated uh, calculation. So, you know, we don't give any sort of guarantees. Can we, Fast Abdul, can we kind of compare this like in the sense that like, um, like unions collectively bargain? On, on behalf of workers, right? Like you're collectively bargaining on behalf of uh, users for PHUX, basically, right? So you're giving them the best, um, the best bargaining power, the best, the, the best way to um, <clears throat> use their weight, in a sense. Is that does that make sense? I'd say it's um, it somewhere between making a deal with a union and making a deal with the mob, and we know there's a crossover there. So I'd say that's accurate. Thanks, Buck. Oh yeah. boy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but, that's not but a there, good guys. That is a terrible comparison. What are you doing? That's, but there, but there is no it. union Stop or it. there is no union or mob in this. But in reality, but yeah, it's it's got like a similar type of effect. <laughs> um, Thanks, Katie. But where's the purchasing power coming for the extra additional fox to keep building into the pool? Where's like the addition? Where's the money coming from? To yeah. So um, as. Part of how, like the function of the protocol, uh, you know, and there's a couple different facets to it. But when people transact and they uh, they use our front end to get the boost that our large pool of prime flux will provide, uh, the protocol takes 25 percent. And then in a way, in return, you get additional tokens or the two fucks token, which is native to our ecosystem and the prime two fucks token, which is sort of a wrapped uh, receipt for prime fucks tokens that are staked in our system. So we fast Abdul, can you can you tie this back to uh, yield now uh, that you explain this? Yeah, you bet. So like the end result is people end up getting this yield boost uh, on the Fox exchange via the two Fox front end. And that allows them to, you know, be in yield positions where uh, they can see that there's a range and it'll be like it's a 2.5 X boost. So it's between, let's say, 50 and 175 percent in some cases. And they'll be much more likely to get the 175% uh, if they go through something like two fucks that has a very large pool. Let's say it's 500,000. Let's say it's a million dollars over time of a permanently staked prime fucks locked forever in our protocol. They have access to that. So in most cases, it's going to result in a beneficial effect uh, for both uh, the community and for the LP provider. Can I give you like a little bit of advice just uh, for moving forward? And obviously you can tell me to fuck off and not listen to Fair me enough. at all. But um, I think initially you really need to start by actually educating people what the governance side of things is over there for them to even want to like understand why they would want to pull together that as well. Um, you know, I think you need to go back to core basics of people understanding how Fox works. Because like if you go back and look at Curve, you know, Yearn Finance and that are literally fighting um, for control of the governance for this thing. Um, so people that don't know, Curve Finance is like the stablecoin main protocol really over on Ethereum. And there's people that, well, entities that literally fight for the governance and control to get that higher um, reward for people that are participating in the protocol because they like pull together their voting power through them, right? And then their voting power gets a higher APY through those. So, so Katie, when you, when you say fight, that, that what you really mean is uh, they realize this is very valuable territory. Yeah, they do. And that's right? why going back to basics, like instead of trying to dive straight in with like, not necessarily sales pitch, but dive straight into it, go back into explaining people why. Because you earn finance and convex over on Curve, literally like battle with each other to get more people to participate in their protocol with their governance cool. side of things to get that higher um, reward. So like going back to educating people, because I think most people that are sitting in the room right now, a lot of what you just said would have just went over their head. Oh, fair enough. Dylan, do you hear these ins Dylan, do you hear these insights that Katie's giving? Like, why don't you have these insights? Just 
Because uh, everybody likes to shit on Katie, but she's really not as dumb as people think she is. <laughs> no, but I mean, but but Dylan's actually dumber than uh, than than I think he, or than people think he is. Um, no, <laughs> Katie, look. <laughs> Sorry, Dylan. Uh, Boomer, Boomer likes no, to mess with me. It's okay. We all know Katie. Katie. No, Katie. Katie got it so well there. That's such a cool point. Like seriously, it's incredibly valuable real estate. When you're the dominant stablecoin play on Pulse Chain, that's worth something. No one else has done it well. No one else is you know competing against us really. Um, so we're it. Right, it's it's a valuable piece of real estate that we have with PHUX, and what uh, Fast Abdul is is trying to do is to you know try to uh, you know get a, a protocol together that uh, kind of gives you the the best voting power possible, and I I think that personally as the guy that created the other thing I think that's great because it's it's uh it's going to make more intelligent voting decisions. Uh, because there's going to be people that are actually voting with their economic weight. So uh, I think that's that's really cool. So uh, thank you, Fast Abdul. Um, if you don't mind, Sean, we're coming to you, but we have one more, um, and uh, it's my friend, Happy Healer Lover. This is going to be a bit of a weird one, guys. I want to say I want I'm going to pre I'm going to give it a little bit of a. a, a preemptive disclaimer here uh i i really like this guy he seems like the an empathic type um he's a little bit weird he's a little bit eclectic um but uh i think he has a very good heart and he hasn't quite figured out how to punch through the community to get everybody's attention um he's come up with some really weird quirky thing that i don't properly understand yet and i told him I don't have time to read through your website, but can you please give us a two minute elevator pitch that explains it and give it to 400 people who generally really want to see people like him succeed. Like this is the best, this is the best group of people uh, that he can hope for. Uh, because if, if it is something that we all can get behind, then I, I know the people that are listening because I can just scroll down and see are exactly the people that can help him. Um, he, he's not getting the help that he wants currently. Um, and I think that's probably just that we, we don't necessarily understand what it is, what it is that he's doing yet. Um, but um, he's here now and uh, I just want to give him an opportunity to do his thing and uh, t- tell us what, 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 what he's trying to do and why, why he's looking for a donation um, and let us ask a couple questions. So happy healer lover. Uh, the floor is yours. Um, oh, try, man. Please, please try to be succinct, though. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you very much. And I appreciate you, Buck. That was awesome. Hey, lovers, this is your happy healer lover here and our Pulse Chain community. I love you guys. This is the thing that drives me every day. 